All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another great session with the presidential candidate of the fictional Common Sense People's Party. Now, I have said countless times on this channel that the evil that the APC is dishing out will eventually touch every member of the society, including those supporting them as a result of meaningless sentiments like tribe and religion. And we are beginning to see everybody become a victim in one way or the other. First of all, Tinubu's poorly thought out economic policies have caused severe hardship in Nigeria. Can you begin to imagine the rate of depression in Nigeria right now with inflation at an all time high at a time when unemployment is rapidly on the rise? Now, is there any ethnic group or religion that the inflation and poverty did not touch? None. Secondly, we have seen how the APC have been going from state to state using the judiciary to snatch people's mandates in the gubernatorial elections. Even Kano State was not spared. The Muslim Muslim ticket is about to impose a rejected man on Kano as governor. And now, the federal government wants to begin to deal with Nigerians mercilessly on an individual level. The APC government using the EFCC is seeking to enact a fresh law that will deal mercilessly with Nigerians, especially young people, regardless of your tribe or religion. Before I show you details of that update, let me quickly show you this update coming out of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Look at how the papers reported it. Fighting Nigerian leaders fruitless. Pray for them, Adeboe. The pastor in charge of Region 12 of Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Richard Adeboe, has called for more prayers for the leadership of the country to overcome its array of woes and challenges. Adeboe said, rather than protesting and cursing them as done in the past with no reprieve in sight, Nigerians should rather rely on the instrument of prayer for a desired turnaround for the good of the country. The cleric disclosed this while speaking with newsmen at this year's Hallelujah Mega Praise Night, Season 2, with the theme, Dominion, held at the Shimara High School, Ogun State. Adeboe said, There is no nation like Nigeria. The fact that we are still surviving is a symbol that God has created this nation in a very unique way, and very soon, we shall shout victory at last. Nigerians should stand in the place of responsibility, because I have this philosophy that every possibility of God is compelled by the responsibility of man. Let's do what we are supposed to do. Let's move closer to God and let's believe in God and whatever we need to do physically, let's do it. We are not saying we should protest or fight against the government. We have done that in the past. We didn't win the battle. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of God. If only we could talk to God that put them there. I believe things will change and very soon it will change for the better. The message to our leaders is that they should recognize the one that actually put them on the throne. We should stop fighting our leaders. The role of the church is to preach righteousness and establish integrity. If the world sees that what we preach is what we are doing, I believe it will go around and it will be contagious and very soon everybody will be affected. First of all, we need to ask ourselves if it was God that actually put them there. Has Yakub Mahmoudou, INEC chairman, now become God? Or have the corrupt judiciary become God? And let's look at how Nigerians reacted. Let's take some of the tweet reactions. This tweet here says, This criminal APC member on pulpit never ceases to amaze me. With no due respect, fake man of God, you are mad. Oh! And this tweet by the Ninja guy says, In Nigeria, citizens demanding good governance are labeled as fighting leaders. While those same that the GOs readily flock to thriving democracies abroad for comfort. How don't these critics realize that these successful nations were built on the backs of people who stood up, not stood by? You go abroad to enjoy the fruits of other struggles for good governance, yet ridiculing those fighting the same noble battle at home. This is hypocrisy at its finest, and it is unfortunate it mostly comes from daddy Jews who are also milking the already poor masses dry. No to hypocrisy. Oh, and this tweet here says, the church is mainly the part of our problems. You prayed for Ahab for eight years. What was the outcome? Now we should pray for Saul. God will never do unto man what man can do for themselves. Mm. And this tweet here says, What do you say when you hear billions of dollars looted by the same leaders? You are one of the problems in Nigeria today, or God Pastor. 
Chai. And this tweet by Aye Mojuba says, Nigerians challenge are rooted in physical issues, not spiritual. The difference between a victim of the devil and an agent revolves around the control of their willpower. It is not possible to solely pray out an agent. They must be cast away due to their active involvement. Mm. Wow, it is such a shame that most of our pastors have sold out, calling for prayers when the people should be taking actions. Even the Bible says faith without work is dead. And of course, you saw how disrespectful some of the tweets were. The so-called men of God have sacrificed their relevance on the altar of support for the APC. Shout out to men like Bishop Oedepo, Pastor Paul Enenche, Pastor Buba, and a few others who have stood for the truth, who have stood for righteousness. May God bless you. Now, let us look at what the federal government and the EFCC are cooking. Look at how the papers reported it. EFCC seeks law to seize unexplained wealth. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Mr. Ola Olukoyede, has called for legislation against unexplained wealth as a way of checking the criminal activities of treasury looters in the country. The EFCC spokesperson, Mr. Dele Oyewale, in a statement quoted Olukoyede as making the call at a two-day international law conference organized by Christopher University, Moe Ogun State. The theme of the conference was Unexplained Wealth in the Global South, Examining the Asset Recovery and Return Trajectory. Oluko Ede said several countries, including the United Kingdom, Australia, Mauritius, Kenya, Zimbabwe, and Trinidad and Tobago had embraced the unexplained wealth others since it came into force in 2018. He said the EFCC was still relying on the provision of Section 7 of its Establishment Act to check the menace. The issue of unexplained wealth is not a local issue. There are pieces of jurisdictional legislation across the world to tackle it. To date, countries of the world are faced with the criminalities emanating from money laundering practices and illicit funds. The circumstance led to the promulgation of unexplained wealth orders that came into force in 2018. Several countries such as United Kingdom, Australia, Mauritius and African countries like Kenya, Zimbabwe and Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean have come up with UWO. Nigeria is yet to come up with a national legislation on it, he said. The EFCC boss, who was represented at the conference by Abuja Zonal Commander Assistant Commander of the EFCC, Eswan Adebayo Adeni, emphasized that Treasury looters would have little cover if the issue of unexplained wealth was tackled more seriously across the world. Oluko Ede said, The concerns about unexplained wealth bordered more on asset tracing, investigation, and recovery. Now, every adult in this country knows that those who made this man, Mr. Ola Oluko Ede, the EFCC chairman, are the number one people who possess unexplained wealth in this country. His employers are the highest treasury looters. So when he's talking about fighting them, you know he's not saying the truth. So you know that the law that he's seeking to enact is not going to be used against them. It is going to be used against defenseless Nigerians, not the real thieves. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Look at some of the tweet reactions. This tweet here by Mr. Mon says, Have you seized Tinubu's own? That's a very big question. Because that is the number one person that is guilty of this thing you are talking about. And this tweet here says, This law will always be for poor Nigerians, not the political class, who don't own a business but yet have billions in their accounts. But yet, that the small two million for your old boy account, then they are. Mm. And this tweet here says, Please, they should also do something about unexplained poverty. <laughs> and this tweet here by Godwin says, It's the EFCC. If thoroughly you want to do this job with your true heart and mind, you have to start from your ogre at the top. But obviously, you won't do that. It is the masses and the innocent boys on the street which your men will start going after. Good luck. Mm, that is their plan. To begin to harass Nigerians on the streets that are trying to get by. Because they have made the life too difficult. They believe that people should be dropping dead. So when you are doing well to an extent, they begin to harass you. They say they want to know the source of your wealth, while the real thieves are staring them in the face. In fact, it's the real thieves that employ them. And this tweet here says, 
Start with whoever appointed you and those that approved your appointment. Chai! And this tweet here says, if this law is passed, trust me, it's going to only work for the non-political average men on the street. Everybody already knows. And this tweet by Cyril says, it is still the masses they want to bully as government can't borrow anyhow anymore. They now want to forcefully take from the masses. Chai! Well, like I've said several times on this channel, nothing surprises me about the APC anymore. And this is how Nigerians will continue to suffer until these people are kicked out of power. Anyway, make I leave them here. Make I still enter town. <laughs> make I go get some Ogbonge political news. Where will I go like? Why? Because that because of now. Now I did here. So, don't go away. Don't go.